This is why women with PCOS will feel better initially doing these. And then next thing you know, they start to feel bad again because that estrogen is getting higher. There. Welcome to part six of the hormone series where we will continue with on how to optimize hormones. And in today's video, we're going to do DHEA, androgens, and testosterone on the other side there. So these ones we have to be uh, a lot more careful with. So once again, referring back to previous episodes, um, there is a lot of dangers uh, that can come with messing around with one's DHEA, androgens, and testosterone. Um, so if you haven't watched that video yet, please refer back to that if you are going to venture into any of this. But as always, consult your physician and consult a professional prior to doing any of this stuff, okay? Have your labs, especially when it comes to DHEA. Most people we get assume are high in estrogen. You can flush that estrogen, right? You're not in a lot of danger, only at a lot of benefits. If your estrogen gets too low, your sex drive kind of messed up, we kind of just have to reset it. But these guys... Increasing them too high can really lead to a lot of issues. Too low can lead to a lot of issues, and they're harder to get back up than something like estrogen. So please, please, consult a professional, get your labs done, okay? But now that that's out of the way, DHEA. So as we discussed earlier, DHEA can go high or low with stress. Depending on the individual environment, what's going on within the body, it can go high or low with stress. But I'm going to start with high. So if we see high levels of DHEA, we want to talk about reducing stress. Now that's, it's again, more than perceived stress, emotional, it's physical as well, air you breathe, so on and so forth. So a lot of times DHEA can be high from overtraining. So take a look at your training. If you are someone who is exercising, you know, five, six times a week, plus doing HIIT cardio, plus jogging, plus spin classes, whichever, Take a look at that and maybe, okay, maybe I need to back off from this to help lower my DHEA, okay? Um, adaptogens can help, as we mentioned, because high levels of cortisol can also result in high DHEA. So ashwagandha, uh, uh, relora, things like that, those can really help. So that actually, sorry, that'll be more in your cortisol manager. Um, I discussed that in a previous hormone video. Um, cortisol Pro from Tonic C, Cortisol Manager from some company on Amazon, which is Suffices, and Court Ease from uh, Nutrition Dynamics. So those would be good for lowering cortisol levels. So that could help reduce your DHEA if you are in that scenario. Uh, once again, too, a Dutch test will tell you your DHEA, but it'll also tell you your cortisol and what you're doing with it. And that can give you an indicator of which route you should take for lowering that DHEA. Uh, reducing inflammation, because inflammation is also a big culprit of causing higher levels of DHEA um, through various mechanisms. Um, optimal exercise could lower it. So if you're one of those individuals that's not excessively exercising, and you're doing like no exercise, uh, implementing a workout routine could help lower that DHEA. In simplistic form, you could just be, you could start using that DHEA. Plus, done correctly, it could help lower inflammation, improve insulin sensitivity, which can lower uh, uh, cortisol levels, uh, and also improve your stress management, right? So, if you're someone that doesn't exercise, that is how you could help. GDAs, glucose disposal agents, okay? A lot of us are struggling with higher levels of insulin, which is bringing on more inflammation and higher levels of cortisol. So you can use glucose disposal agents. Uh, you know, we got like berberine, uh, bitter melon, cinnamon, things like that, r alpha lipoic acid. Uh, those help reduce insulin levels, which can have a systemic effect on well, literally everything. Uh, but in the context of this, they can help reduce uh, DHEA. Nutrition Dynamic right now probably makes the best one. Um, there's called GDA Max. Uh, but you can kind of like piece them together and do it that way too. Uh, you have to be careful with things like berberine though, because they can address bacteria, which can cause inflammation and so on and so forth. So just <laughs> to get so professional. Um, metformin, uh, definitely consult your physician on this one, uh, but metformin can help reduce these hormones, um, but it also can improve insulin sensitivity. Um, but once again, 
used within the proper context because there can be side effects with metformin. Um, now, low. So, all found in high except metformin. So, reducing stress can help increase DHEA. Remember, it's primarily produced by the adrenals. So, if they're so damn busy producing cortisol, they're not going to be able to produce, produce a lot of DHEA. Um, so, addressing all of these that you see in the high can also help with the symptoms of low. This is why labs are so important. You need to see where everything is at so you can make that right choice, okay? Um, and then, if you have your labs, you can supplement DHA if it's low. Only if your androgens are low. Remember, you can have low DHA but high androgens. So have your labs, and if you are a perfect candidate for that, you can supplement up to 50 milligrams of DHA. Once again, depending on the individual, you will check your labs, okay? To know if you're supplementing up. So that's DHEA. So now, going into androgens, we want to be extra careful with these ones, especially with the way society is trending these days. And a lot of people are kind of actually dealing with high androgens, um, you know, until you get into like a menopausal state as a female and whatnot. But when we're dealing with high androgens, we want to look at one step is, is getting them out, is like draining them, okay, is how you can look at it. You still have to address why are my androgens high? Am I over-exercising? And is my stress super high? Um, I should have put in here, oops. Uh, do I have a PCOS diagnosis? Right? Is that why they're high? Am I overly inflamed? So I'm secreting a lot of insulin, which is converting to a lot of androgens, right? Um, is my progesterone, not mainly mine, but more so women, are their progesterone to estrogen ratios off, causing more to go into androgens are they supplementing androgens are they taking SARMs Anavar those kind of things right find the root cause of why they're high but what you can do to reduce them is things like saw palmetto, saw palmetto and stinging nettle so yes ladies a prostate support supplement can be great for you because that's what they contain is saw palmetto and stinging nettle for example so it can help feed out those androgens but Remember, this is a crucial piece of information to remember. This is where a lot of women go like, sorry, I shouldn't say wrong, but a lot of women run into these roadblocks with things, especially polycystic ovarian syndrome with saw palmetto and inositol because these will help more androgens. Well, they don't just magically disappear. They are going into estrogen. Most PCOS already struggle with estrogen. So they lower the androgens, reducing some of that inflammation and that swelling and that acne. They feel a little bit better, but then next thing you know, they're not detoxifying their estrogen properly and it begins to build up, okay? So as you are draining out these androgens using things like saw palmetto, stinging nettle, and inositol, you also need to make sure you're detoxifying your estrogen. I'll say it again. This is why women with PCOS will feel better initially doing these and then next thing you know, they start to feel bad again because that estrogen is getting higher, okay? Um, Anositol is also great for like replenishing serotonin neurotransmitter receptors. Um, so that's really good there too. So Anositol has got quite a few benefits for sure. Um, so now spironolactone and metformin again, okay? Really consult your uh, physician, but spironolactone is good um, for women with PCOS. You could use that acutely to help lower those androgens and address the root cause uh, as well as metformin. Um, yeah, obviously stress. Okay. <laughs> and so now if they're low, once again, stress can be playing a role. You could be burning through these by overtraining because that could happen as well. This is why context is so important. So if you have low and you have high stress load, you could probably say, okay, this could be contributing to my low androgen. So I need to look at reducing that stress and improving that stress management. You can supplement DHEA as long as DHEA is low. Okay. You can supplement DHEA because remember, DHEA feeds into androstenedone, down. So that is how we're going to raise our androgens. Okay. Um, pregnenolone. Uh, pregnenolone can feed into androgens. That is one way that you can use that as well. Remember, it feeds into all hormones though. Now, if you refer back to a previous uh, hormone video, I speak about uh, ashwagandha and how it can lower cortisol levels. And this is what this is why they give the name adaptogens. At this dosage, it could have a different effect. It can actually raise our androgens, okay? So that's is, this is why dosage is important. So if you actually, because I'll do this a lot to see like what people are Googling. 
So I'll Google something like ashwagandha dosage and it'll be all over the place. It'll tell you this, it'll tell you that, it'll tell you whatever, right? So higher dosages can really help with increasing androgens. Um, and then once again, as long as you've done your labs, consult a professional, talk to your physician, things like um, uh, uh, androgen medication, so like Anavar, right? Anavar gets a really bad name because of dum-dums who don't know what they're doing, uh, bodybuilding coaches who run no labs and just give them Anavar because they want them to win, their client to win a trophy so they look good. Anavar catches a really bad name. Remember, these medications were found to save lives. Just leave it to human beings to abuse things or use them within the improper context. But if you are the, that perfect candidate for it, Anavar can be a good way to bring up those androgens, okay? Uh, and then same with SARMs, selective androgen response modulators. Things like Austrian and Cardine are probably really good. MK677 could be a good one as well. That kind of plays a role in growth hormone. So the research says. Um, so that's something you could suggest if these androgens are low and if you are detoxifying your estrogen properly. Um, and then aromatized inhibitors. Because you could be over aromatizing, draining out those androgens. Once again, figure out the root cause, but you can use aromatized inhibitors to prevent that and kind of keep some androgens in there, having that energetic effect that is required for vitality, health, muscle building, uh, metabolism, so on and so forth. Just don't get them too high. This is why it's not as a matter of fact, it's not as simple as just going and getting your labs checked once. You have to consistently check them when you use any of these things. Okay. As soon as you start messing with these hormones or sorry, optimizing these hormones, you need to make sure you are checking your labs that they're not getting too high. Um, but you can all like, if you know what you're doing, like myself, I can use symptoms because sometimes it's very difficult for, uh, clients to get blood work. It can be pretty obvious. Once again, referring back to the previous videos where I explained the symptoms of high or low, it can be pretty obvious when someone is getting too high of androgens. Like I've, I've gotten Dutch tests back, um, and we ran SARMs, for example, and right away they've gotten puffy and watery and bloated and stuff. And that's telling me there's a gut issue. And so their androgens are getting too high. And so we have to pull back and address that before there doesn't mean that SARMs are bad for them. They're just not great at that moment in time. Okay. So it's a matter of addressing the root cause. Um, but always check your labs. Okay. Cause as mentioned, a lot of women give themselves PCOS with Anavar and SARMs. All right, now getting into testosterone. So, high. Once again, inflammation can cause you to be high in testosterone. Various mechanisms. Uh, there could be pituitary issues on the other spectrum. Remember I said benign tumor can mean low. You can also be outputting too much luteinizing hormone, for example, and having high testosterone. Uh, talking about females, PCOS diagnosis plus addressing that PCOS. That is a very common symptom of PCOS is high testosterone due to insulin, okay? Because of inflammatory condition, causing more insulin levels, stress, and so on. This is why, reduce insulin. Look at glucose disposal agents, because that can stop the overconverting to testosterone. Or sorry, not stop, but like reduce the overconverting to testosterone. Reducing stress, for stress can create inflammation, signaling issues, so on and so forth, can result in higher testosterone. Once again, most people, unless it's females that are PCOS diagnosed, are actually lower in testosterone. So you're not going to be dealing with this high testosterone a lot unless you have a PCOS diagnosis that is showing high testosterone because not all PCOS is high testosterone or high androgens. Um, so lower your TRT dosage. So a lot of, over the years I've done this, a lot of men have said they're on TRT and then we look at their blood work and their blood, it's like ridiculously high. And... So their dosage is actually like 500 milligrams. That's not a TRT dose, okay? That is your own prescribed dose. A TRT dose will be anywhere from 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams. Now, even though that's being prescribed by a doctor, it still can be too high. I recently had a client at 200 milligrams and it, it was too high. We needed to bring it down, especially in his circumstance. If he was in a little bit different position, that's okay, especially if you're trying to be a bodybuilder and go for like, you know, he wasn't like he was like super, super physiological levels that was going to cause issues. It was just causing issues in his context at that time, right? Um, so a lot of guys will think, okay, well, the doctor says this, so I'm going to do that. Have your labs checked and you got to see your estrogen and what's going on. You might need to lower that TRT dosage, okay? Or just stop writing so many drugs. Someone like me that made that big mistake. So, low. 
So we know sleep has a big impact on hormones, um, especially testosterone. Now, one or two nights prob of bad sleep probably isn't going to affect your hormones a lot. Uh, it can affect insulin a lot and have like a little cute effect, but not to the point of where you're like really bringing back low, low testosterone in labs. It's that consistent poor sleep quality and quantity. So like after a week or two weeks, and most people have poor sleep quality very consistently. So this is where we really want to work on improving that, but that could be going back to addressing the root cause. Okay. What's, what's causing this? Do I have an overgrowth? Do I have a parasite? Do I have insulin resistance? Is my circadian rhythm off? A lot of things like that. It's easier to like, let's say you wake four or five times a night. It's quite easy to solve three or four of that. But that one waking, so usually people wake between one and three, the liver, that is a lot more work to get somebody to sleep through the night entirely. That is where, but to, if you're breaking up like four or five times a night, that's usually really easy to resolve. It's the, then you get down to only one time, that's the hardest to resolve. Zinc, we know zinc plays a big role in hormones, especially testosterone. So you can do up to hundred milligrams depending on the context. Remember, zinc and copper fight for absorption so recently i had a client uh her doctor put her on zinc and we're in this new protocol and she now that the doctor told her she needs to be on zinc she's like oh i want to supplement my zinc i said no your other stuff has zinc in it so you do not need to do that because if you start doing that you're going to start competing with copper and then you're going to disrupt that ratio and then you can cause the issues okay so don't overdo your zinc like those that know me no, I recommend when you start to feel a cold coming on that you mega dose zinc, that acute period is going to be okay. It's that chronic usage. So ladies with a copper IUD supplement zinc. Okay. Um, Humanofort. Humanofort has been shown in research to increase testosterone levels. Same with maca and fenugreek and boron. Here is the thing about those nutrients. If your low testosterone is due to age, they're not going to have the biggest impact. They might help a little bit, but they are not going to bring you up to natural levels. Now, if you are someone of that age that has low testosterone, just genetic, like, or just age related, it wouldn't hurt. And let's say you need to lose weight. It still wouldn't hurt to run these in like a caloric deficit to prevent even lower, but they're not going to bring you back up to optimal, like youth type levels. Okay. That's where T r t comes in testosterone replacement therapy okay and like i said when i was talking about hormone replacement therapy for menopausal females any dangers you can read from this are idiots who abuse it like i had or are people who are not detoxifying their hormones properly that is where the danger is there is genetics and stuff so this is why you have to get your labs checked but under the right supervision and with the right lifestyle nutrition plan TRT is perfectly safe and it could absolutely change your life, especially for a male. Okay. Um, B vitamins, methylation play a huge role. They're super, super important. That could go into like all hormones. Just take your B vitamins, methylated form, pure encapsulations has a good B complex. Um, once again, if labs are showing low DHE and androgens, you can take DHE and androgens to help improve that testosterone because those are going to feed into testosterone. Uh, this is where pregnenolone for males is is more effective than females pregnenolone will work good for increasing uh testosterone levels and then vitamin d3 uh the vitamin d3 is super popular uh gets a big name especially around the whole recent incidents and everything um you are especially if you're in canada and you are the winter months you definitely are safe to take out the 10,000 on you okay it's highly unlikely you're going to get vitamin d toxic highly highly unlikely here in canada once again, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's genetics and so on and so forth. So get your levels checked, which is near impossible here in Canada. They just will not check your vitamin D levels. But if you don't feel safe, check them and see that you'll probably save running this at least five times a week. During the winter months, I'll run like seven times if I'm not getting out a lot. I'll run 10,000 IU um, uh, seven days a week, okay? That's very good for like we're talking immune function, but it's also good for, uh, um, uh, hormones like hormone utilization and production and stuff. So vitamin D plays a really, really big role on that. And like, if you're in Canada, you're guaranteed to be deficient in vitamin D. Okay. 
Uh, if you can do other sources to get vitamin D, like foods and sunlight and so on and so forth, awesome. But you can also supplement vitamin D. Now, the thing is those most vitamin D supplements, um, they're really starting to come with K2, vitamin K2, because that's what's required. So like the um, uh, the MK7 version, I'm having a little bit of a brain fart there. But the thing is, you look at most supplements, it'll be 1000 IU of vitamin D to 100 MCG of vitamin K. So if you were to take 10 drops of that to get 10,000 IU, you've now ex like exceptionally exceeded your vitamin K intake that you want. So Nutridyne has a very, very good one. It's 10,000 IU for 100 MCG of vitamin K. It's probably my favorite, but, um, but other companies have a little bit better ratios or you could just get them separately. So then get vitamin K, only do like 100 to 120 MCG a day and then use a, a separate vitamin D supplement to get your five to 10,000. I use okay so that is some of the uh protocols that we could use supplements and and, and whatnot and techniques to help uh lower or increase these hormones uh dha androgens and testosterone but as mentioned please 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 consult your healthcare professional um prior to doing any of this and have your labs checked um you know if you do happen to mess something up and go too high of testosterone too high of dha acutely that can be easily correctable it's that long term because we become biased right so let's say you, your labs came back low in dhea and you started taking dhea and all of a sudden you have more energy you feel better your skin looks better everything and then next thing you know you started to get some symptoms but you were like no dhea made me feel so good i want to stick on dhea it's the same thing that most men go through with testosterone when they run performance enhancing drugs, they reach a point where that performance enhancing drug is actually slowly destroying their body, but they still want that size and that strength and that masculine feeling. So they get very biased and continue to run that testosterone, right? So just your labs will tell you, Hey, look, you need to back off. Okay. Get your labs done. All right. Um, so that's it for the optimizing hormones. I think I'll do one more part on this hormone series and it'll be like a little bit of a summary just a recap on everything and some important uh, key takeaway notes for you guys. Uh, and then we'll cap off that hormone series there. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and follow me on Instagram at that.coach.curtis.